Today we're going to tie a fly I call ducks DOA or dead on arrival. What this fly imitates is a dun that hasn't gotten off the water, dies on the water, and you can't tell it from here, but I'll slowly turn it. Uh, looking down upon it, you'll see it's like a dun, uh, slightly curled, uh, wings down in the water, feet up in the air there, and trying to look from the bottom side to see it, you see the same thing. So that's the profile you get. That little bit of a curled body on a dun, uh, the wing laying on the water, it's dead drift, not moving. Uh, it's a dead fly. It's one that's not going to fly away, and it's one that selective trout will key on. So now we'll go through the tying steps, and uh, I'll also throw a picture on between now and the tying steps of a mass of BWOs out on the Green River uh, that were the, in this shape. They were duns that did not get off the water, got blown over on their sides. They were matted up on the bank. Gave me a great opportunity to study them and, uh, and then go from there. The first step is to take one of the bodies uh, made using my uh, technique shown in uh, my videos 1 and 2. Uh, today we'll be tying a number 16 fly. You see this little tool I made. Very important that uh, you get the right dimensions on this. I find that if I don't use a tool like this, I tend to make them a little bit larger. So this is going to be a number 16. So I'm going to cut this off right at that 16 point. Next, because I'm tying a number 16 body length, I want a little bit smaller uh, scud hook for that. So I'll be using a size 18 scud hook. You see I've already crushed down the barb. Now what I do, I say simply, but uh, it's something that's hard to do with a camera in front. But you see this little hole in the end there, maybe. Well, at any rate, I thread that down carefully over that hook eye, taking my time to get it, because I want to get it to where it comes out almost at the very tail. And I think I'm a out there now. Okay, you can see that right there. And the reason I do that is that'll allow me to do a curved side on it when we get it finished. Next, I slide that body that I put on on up uh, to where you see it now so that I can get the uh, back of the hook in the vise. Then I'll slide it back just a little bit and I'll do a few wraps to give it a good thread base and ending up right at the end. Then I'll take a drop of glue, put the glue on there. Obviously that'll help hold that body in place as we catch a lot of fish on it. Then very carefully move it up over there and at this point I'll take my thread come across the top a few times back to where the wing goes in and at the same time twisting the fly a little bit. Uh, you can't see it yet but you'll see it when I get done. So now I'm at the wing position. Now what we're going to do is tie in the single wing. Now as you saw when I started the video and showed you the completed pictures the single wing actually looks like the profile of a mayfly that during emergence and the hatching uh, just didn't make it, couldn't cut it. And uh, so there you have that. And I'll turn that a little bit and probably shorten a little bit because I don't it'll make it uh, cast easier but basically there you see the wing on next thing I'll do is I'll take uh, some hackle and I'll go ahead and bind that in fairly tightly doesn't hurt to build up here because as you know the uh, 
thorax is larger than the abdomen at any rate. Now if it isn't, this is a time just to take a wisp of dubbing. Do any dubbing method you like. I personally just put along wet my fingers and and then I'll push it up. Do a couple wraps around there to get that profile, which I think is very important. Then I'll just stop right there. Then just for ease of seeing it, I'll take my vise, turn it, grab my hackle, one turn back, one turn front, because you're not really trying to put enough on there or necessarily float to fly. What you're trying to do, and I'll show you in a second, is just look like uh, the feet of the insect as it's laying on its side. Now when I've got that hackle on, I trim it off with a razor blade. The uh, reason being that way you don't cut as many barbs. And at this point, even though the fly is not finished, I'll go ahead and half hitch, uh, not half hitch it, but quick finish it, because the rest of what we're going to be doing is shaping and trimming. And uh, as you see right there, I broke my thread. That's what happens when you use 16. So I'll put a couple little more half hitches on it to hold it. You know, just a little recovery there. Okay, so now we've got the fly there. So the next thing I want to do is I go to the bottom and I'll trim it off flat because I want this thing sitting in the water and this being the bottom of the fly. Go ahead and trim the top because it's unnecessary, but as you might be able to see uh, from here, and I'll move the camera up just a little bit. It's a problem with zooming too much. But what you'll see here is on the bottom of that, and I'll put something black behind it, you'll be able to see right here are the, uh, the legs of the insect. That's the wing of it. We'll put a little glue on a second, but we'll want that to sit to the side like that. So it looks almost like the curvature of a, uh, of a uh, mayfly that hatched but didn't, didn't make the big time and is floating along. And it'll look very much like a photo early in the, sh early in the video of the actual uh, duns that didn't make it that are on their sides. Uh, pull that, I put a little glue along that. Even that silicone, that glue will help it hold its shape on the side. As it dries. And so there's what you have. You have a slight natural makefly uh, done. Now this would be upside down. I guess if you looked at it, if it were out floating in the water, you'd, you'd see that profile roughly of the dun, the tail up in the air, and the, and the wing up in the air. And uh, I tend to make my wings too long sometimes. Uh, this is the top of the fly, which would be it upside down. But what it's going to be doing is going to be laying on the side uh, like it was dead on arrival. And that's why I call it the duck's dead on arrival. You'll find this thing uh, is a fantastic fly for selective fish uh, during a a medium to heavy hatch and late in the hatch uh, they really key on the, these duns that did not get off the water and uh, for one reason or the other and of course there are many cripple patterns out there uh, but this is a sort of a cripple pattern uh, but at a more advanced stage than a, a nymph or an emerger uh, give this a try I think you'll like it and uh, and good fishing bye